Sunday, and it's time for church. We're so glad that you came to the City Church this morning. We hope that this can be a place that you can connect, grow, and serve. Connect with God and the City Church family through worship and fellowship. Grow in your understanding of God and who you are, and serve the Lord in His community of Northwest Arkansas. Today is Sunday, and it's time for church. Let's get started. A busy morning around here, and um, if you've been around me this morning, you know that I've kind of been scatterbrained all over the place, but um, let's take a minute and just kind of like figure out what we're doing here, right? What are we doing here? You know, we're, we're here to, to worship and praise and to give honor to the Lord. We're here to hear about the, uh, the good news, the Word of God, and so let's just remember that this morning. So we did this last week, and have everybody stand up. And let's just uh, cut that. Let's cut everything. Let's just, everyone stand aside from what you're doing. And let's, let's focus on what we're supposed to be doing here today. So if you put your left hand out as a reminder that you are here to give everything to the Lord. All the things that you have, all the burdens, all the desires, all your giftings, your talents, your, everything that you have, let's give it to the Lord. Let's take your right hand out and let's receive from the Lord today. Everything that you've given, you will receive back to him, from him. And let's just pray that you receive from the Lord today. May we do that? This is the, pro- the correct posture we're supposed to come with today. Lord, would you fill our hands as we give you our hearts, we give you our desires, Lord, we give you everything we have. But would you give us, Lord, you, yourself, may we, may we fully focus on you today. May we understand that this time of worship is a time to come with our praise. It's, it's time to come with our burden. It's time to come to bring everything to you and lay it at your feet. Would you connect with us, Lord, in, in a powerful way today as we enter into this time of worship? Lord, and may we receive richly from the word of God. May, may we receive from you, Lord. We praise you today, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Men, are you thankful to be in the house of the Lord today? Let's sing. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison door. from that grave oh my god still rolling stones away there's joy in the house of the lord there's joy in the house of the lord today we won't be quiet we shout out Let 
your voice and sing. There's joy. Say. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Fight your battles is what it means. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Oh. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Jehovah Jireh, meet your needs. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Shalom be your peace, Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, meet your need. Jehovah Rapha, heal your. Oh, he's a healer. Jehovah Shalom be your peace. Call the name. Call the name. Call the name. Jehovah, all our praise, all our praise, all our praise. Be call the name, call the name, call the name, call the great name of Jehovah. All our praise, all our every single praise, all our praise. Jehovah. 
time I want to invite anyone who wants prayer to come down now. This is a house of prayer and a house of worship. So today, if you have any needs personally or you know of any needs that you want to come forward for behalf of someone, on the behalf of someone, go ahead and come. Because our God is a God who still answers prayers. Do you believe it? I do, because I've seen it.
glimpse of glory we sing once more worthy 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 lord forever forever singing worthy 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 lord another glimpse of glory we sing once more worthy 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 we praise you this morning thank you Lord for your faithfulness Lord we're believing for all those things we prayed for those needs to be met the bodies to be healed Lord all these things that we brought to you and laid at your feet this morning we, we ask Lord that you would just take those burdens Lord take those from us Lord and, and we put them into your hands we trust you Lord so whatever the outcome is we trust you with it Lord we praise you we praise you because you're worthy. You're worthy of everything, Lord, that we have to give and so much more. We're so grateful to be in your presence. We're so thankful to be in your church today, worshiping together as a church family, Lord. We are so blessed. Thank you for all these blessings, Lord. Thank you for this, this congregation, this family, this church. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Yeah, I turn it on for you. It's all right. We're learning. Buttons aren't my thing. It's all right. Hey, we have some announcements this morning for you, and uh, uh, a lot of exciting things are happening. It's springtime. We're getting our our outreach ministries back up and running, and and uh, I the the break is needed. It helps us, you know, with our funds to get those back up and and a little bit of rest. But I miss it. Here we go. Here we go again. Ready? So. Uh, our next city night in the park will be Wednesday night, April 24th. And so uh, be this normal stuff we do with this food truck and, and the kids' activities. And I don't know what we were talking about yesterday. Spring fling, maybe. Spring fling will be fun for the kids. And, and uh, we'll have uh, a meal, of course, and, and all that stuff going on, too, as well. Good. Yeah. thinking like a succotash kind of a thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's what we're thinking. Like Silver City? Yeah. Oh. Well, that sounded really great. No. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna get the big skillet. Is this I something different? Would really like to have one of those. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's the twenty fourth, and then Serve Sunday is gonna be April twenty. 20- hey, I want to say something about April twenty fourth. Sorry, you're okay. Moving on. Go for it. Okay, so last last in March was our first one after winter, and I just I don't know if it was just the night. I don't know what it was, but I just felt like people are hungrier for more than just dinner. Like they were grateful for dinner, but they were hungrier for more. And so I just want to have a second. So I'm going to encourage you like 
don't let anybody sit there and eat dinner by themselves. I don't know that that hardly ever happens, but just take the opportunity and, and sit yeah. down and really talk to people. Say, how are you? Sometimes that's a really powerful question. Sometimes it's a really hard question. If anybody asked you, how are you on a hard day? It's a tough yeah, thing you to had answer. Totally open up to you last, last month when you did that. I did, yeah, I did. And I mean, I wasn't like digging. I wasn't trying to get in their business. What's wrong with sometimes you? Sometimes people... <laughs> Sometimes people just <laughs> yeah. need to be really seen. And and uh, I was just sensing everybody I talked to uh, was hungry for that. So, so It was special. That was God's a special night. Open some doors for us this year. Yeah, we, I don't think we served as many people as we did, but we sure did make some really special connections with, with folks. Yeah. Weather's getting with better. There will be a lot of people in the park. Yeah, it was a little chilly, though. So, yeah, can we talk about Surf Sunday? Yes, we can. <laughs> no, thanks you for speaking up. That was good. Um, the 28th, so the next Sunday, uh, we got two Sundays till then, but we, we this living mission series we've been doing, we want to hear from, from me, we want to hear from Sam, we have a guest speaker, which we got today, Matt's here today. And uh, the fourth Sunday, we always want to, like, model it. Like, what are we talking about try here? Try it so, out. Try it out, yeah. So this month we're on Surf Sunday, it'll look kind of normal, and you come in normal, but the end of service... We're going to uh, make meals to go, like freeze, like not a, not a freeze dry, but like a dry meal. Mm -hmm. So we can have 400 meals, uh, servings ready to go. And that servings way, when we go to the, meals. I think exactly. servings, it'll be five servings per bag. Okay. And so we'll have meals to give to people when they come, they get their, that, that night's need met. But if we can recognize just by conversations like, there's a greater need there. We'll be able to provide some other meals that they can take home and, and serve their, have family night cool. and Love food. It. So it'll just be like add water and put it in a pot and cook it kind of thing. But anyways. We'll put somebody else in charge well, we'll of the we'll be making these on Serve Sunday. <laughs> I think it's only, with as many people as we have, I think it's only going to take like 20, 30 minutes. We'll be set up. We'll probably take this section down and have it set up ready this to go. True. They know what to do. They're pros. This is their heart. Okay. They're good. You guys They're got good. it. We'll They're move good. on. <laughs> uh, another thing that we're excited about is worship night at Murphy Park. We've been asked to join uh, vi by Vision Church, uh, who's cool. meeting just over here a little ways right now uh, with Phil, Phil and Nicole Johnson, the pastor there, friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And they've asked us to be a part of worship night. So <clears throat> uh, we're going to join together with their worship team, Daniel, and and uh, I haven't we haven't talked to the team. If we don't know if you're, I don't, you may be playing bass, I don't know. Uh, we haven't talked to, to all the details through yet, but, but our worship team is going to be part of that. And uh, we're going to have our food truck out that night. We'll serve up. And then uh, Pastor Matt's going to be there. And I don't know, we have like a, a slow group of pastors and uh, we'll all be kind of We're better together. Night. It's cheesy. It's Definitely. cliche, but we are. We serve the same people. We talked about that this time. Yeah. Morning. So we're going to be joining up with our competition, you know, and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just a stupid, funny thing to think about as other churches being a competition. But, uh, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be wonderful and a great night of worship. At four o'clock, we're gonna be doing evangelism. So if you'd like to be part of that, it's four o'clock, and then six thirty is the worship uh, night with all the worship teams together, and uh, we'll be promoting and bringing people in at that four o'clock time. What's the date on this one? May fifth. May fifth. Cinco, Cinco de, de Mayo. Mayo. It's easy to remember. We should serve tacos, tacos or fajitas, something like that. Uh, Spanish service will be part of that. Um, so that'll be fun. Love it. It's going to be a good night. So Sunday night, May 5th. Vision Fund is the other thing I was going to bring up. Uh, we are making progress. Our goal for this year is 68,000. We made, uh, we're at 56, 349 so far. If you don't know, the, the reason we started doing this is because um, we've missed opportunities in the past for buildings to come up, things have come up, and it's like, we, we bring them our hopes, our desires, our vision, and people, that's, they love to hear that, but apparently money is also important. And so I've learned that. So we decided to start this vision fund, and we're making a lot of progress. Um, so we've, we're making progress. So if you continue to give to that, you guys have got automatic giving and all the things set up, but we want to be able to actually have like a plan to, instead of just hopes and dreams. <laughs> hopes and dreams Wish are important, <laughs> but when it comes to buying things, it only gets you so far. So... So yeah, that's the update. I haven't done that in a while, but thank you for your faithfulness and your giving. We're, we're making progress, but we've got a long ways to go. Yeah. Um, if you know any millionaires, <laughs> let them know that we accept their money. We're working hard. Yeah. Your faithfulness is making a difference. It makes a difference every week. 
here, but it, it's going to make a difference in that building too. Yeah, and honestly, that's, that's the, the miracle of it is like um, there might be millionaires here. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't really know that information, but most likely there's not. And, and we're okay. able, the small church is able to do so much in the communities from faithfulness and giving. And so uh, your tithe and offerings make a big difference. You can give today at citynwa.com. Uh, there's text giving. There's lots of ways to give. There's a red box in the back, but but it makes a big difference. It, it helps us uh, operate, do all the things, but also helps us uh, with benevolence and helping others out and, and serving in the park, all those things. <clears throat> it matter. Those are the practical reasons. We also believe that the Lord commands us to give a portion of our uh, income his. back. So it is. Mm -hmm. We give it back to him. But anyway. Well, thank you so much for your faithfulness, your giving. Thanks for being here today. Are we going to mention the little silent auction going on over here? Yes. Second Service is hosting a silent auction, and if there's anything that you just need to go home with, there's sheets over there. Yeah, just fill out the deal, and, yep. and we'll let you know if you win. Yep. So they're raising money. They're going to be doing connect nights and bringing in, uh, having a big meal and helping connect with the community, and it's, good. it's a good thing. Yep. If, if you don't want the thing, just put some money down there and help them out. They raised $1,300 this weekend, by the way, awesome. doing a garage sale. That's great. So they were really hustling and trying to, to, to do a good thing. So That's awesome. anyways, yeah, so our mission here is to help people connect to, grow, and serve God. And we like to model that as much as we can. And so let's do that. Let's take three minutes and connect with one another and, and say, hey, we are living our mission out right now. Just say that to each other as you, as you greet each other. Let's go. Hello, City Church Online. I thought I would take a minute to address you while we're spending a few minutes in worship. I want you to know that I am grateful for those of you that attend weekly on here. Did you know that you can stay engaged online throughout the week, even if you never step foot in our building? It's true. There are three ways that you can start out, and here's the first one, our Facebook group. We have a private Facebook group for our members. There we share event details, prayer requests, and encouragement. We would love for you to join our group. When it asks you how long you've attended, make sure that you're truthful and you just mention that you attend online. The second one is our reading plan. The YouVersion Bible app is one of the most amazing tools for the church that I've ever seen. We have an active men's and women's reading plan that we follow, and there's room each day to share and encourage one another. To join the reading plan, mention it in the comment section that you're interested, and we'll follow up with you. Number three is giving. If you want to be more involved in the City Church, one of the best ways to do that is by supporting its mission. It takes a lot of people giving sacrificially to keep the mission going. Your financial support not only helps get the gospel to more people, but it also helps fund the mission of our food truck ministry. I believe in the mission of the City Church, and I hope that you will consider uh, supporting that mission as well if you attend online. Thank you for watching and being a part of our church. If you haven't yet, Leave a comment below to let us know that you're watching. We're so grateful that you're here. Have a wonderful day.
right. Well, hey, thanks everyone for living your best mission right now. So that's great. You got, glad you're all uh, communicating and talking this morning. But uh, we got a special special day today as we're uh, continuing our series. Um, I'm real excited to invite uh, Matt up here in just one second. But a little background story. I don't know how long ago we've met, um, but we've come and we've kind of ran a pass have ran across several times. But uh, Phil Johnson over at Vision Church put together this group that uh, pastors that meet, and and I think he uh, the original one that introduced us. Uh, but but uh, we I realized that we do a lot of the same stuff and minister to a lot of the same people. You guys know Timothy, uh, who's been coming for a couple of years now, and he's down in Hot Springs. Uh, but but we he says he has two pastors. I'm his pastor, and Matt's his pastor. So there's actually a few people that we co-pastor together somehow, and, and uh, that's just a really neat, uh, neat thing that we share. And so they, we both minister in Murphy Park a lot, but also, I don't know how much you'll share what you all do, but, but uh, the, the laundry mat there over by the old Harps, used, used to be Harps, and uh, where their church meets. Uh, lots of other things, I'm sure you'll share lots of other things they do, but, uh, but Matt's got a really interesting uh, story and testimony of how he transitioned from uh, a larger church environment down to uh, micro churches and, and small communities, and, and uh, they're just doing really great things. And lots of the things that we see here as a small group, able to do big things. And that's why I invited him to come speak about serving today. So would you invite uh, Matt up today? Thanks. Hello, hello. How are we, everybody? Oh, that is so good. I am a loud talker, and I expect loud and joyful responses. So uh, thank you. Thank you. I, I, have, I have learned a few things about this church in, in, uh, in my short and joyful time getting to know Chris. One is you guys really do have a wonderful reputation in the city. Um, it, it has been such a blessing. I work at Samaritan Church as the pastor, which uh, meets at Samaritan Community Center. Some of you are familiar with. They serve a uh, thousand meals a week, and they really work alongside with those experiencing homelessness. And so to be a church in that environment, um, we just we hear stories. And it's one of the coolest things is to run across people and, and to automatically make the connect back to you guys as well. And so we are both my church and your church strategically and intentionally uh, small, nimble, missional neighborhood churches. And that's on purpose. Yes, that's a blessing. Um, so it, it really is great to kind of have that synonymous kind of heart and vibe. The second thing I've learned is that in the men's restroom, there is a stuffed and mounted piranha. Um, and there's a lot of head shakes like, yes, we know this, Matt. And that's just a, a sick sense of humor that I, I appreciate. And I just want to point out, women, if you've never seen it at the right and appropriate time, check it out. Uh, it's strange and weird and all the good things. So... Really? Wow. Well, hopefully I'm not the last. I've never been on camera before, and as the camera gets raised up to the glory of God. I am tall. I am 5 foot 20, 2 foot 56, or 6 foot 8 for those of you that are bad at math. Um, it's great to be here. So, um, and, and, you know, when, when Chris asked to come in and share about serve, about uh, one of my hearts is really uh, equipping and sending missionaries. I don't know if you noticed this, but the amount of chairs in this room, take a look around, can't fit Springdale. I know I'm brilliant as well as loud, but it can't fit Springdale. And so rather than having this mentality of church that let's just get them all in here, let's get more and more and pack out every corner, uh, your church, like my church, doesn't try to get people in. We try to get people out. And, and, and so equipping missionaries to, to live out their, their, their life and their calling in our hood, in our city, and bringing good to our hood is a phrase that we use a lot. Getting people out of the streets and in, out of the seats and into the streets um, is, is what our vibe is over at Samaritan Church. Um, and so I'm just going to talk to you like I talk to my people, if that's okay. Um, and, and we all the time have people come into our church and they're like, this place is crazy. This is wild. Um, public displays of interruption are often the case. Um, Mid-sermon, just, just a fun, unplanned, non-on-my-notes story a couple weeks ago. Um, right in the middle of a sermon on generosity, a guy pops off his prosthetic leg and says, I love it here so much, I walked here, and I don't even have a leg. I'm like, you're in the right place, man, and I have no idea how you get back in the text from there. So if you interrupt, you, that is fine. We are all on the same page. This is a good place to be together. 
Um, I'm wondering this question. How many of you have had the opportunity to visit um, over on the west side past, uh, um, I almost said uh, 540, but that shows my age, past 49, right? The Highway 49, the new gathering place. Have you guys seen that place that like all the restaurants are coming in and they boast like the best seating and the best parking and the best, uh, what else? The most variety of restaurants. Have you been there yet? Are you kidding me? How many people are married in this room? You have not taken on a date night. Some people that I'm guessing are married didn't raise their hand. That's weird. Chris, Chris will deal with that later. You haven't gone on a date night to the new gathering place? Right? It's so clean. It's so efficient. It's so put together. It's so perfect. It's called the airport. Have you not been there before? Right? You're not, you don't raise your hands even though it's got all the restaurants. It's got all the choices. It's got coffee shops, free Wi-Fi. That used to be a big thing. Not anymore. Everything that you could want is there. They put a lot of money into that place. Why don't we refer to that as the, the, the greatest place ever to go in and hang out, right? It's because the airport is not about who you bring in. It's about who you get out. The whole vision of an airport is where it's sending people to. In fact, with all the planes shut down, but the inside is just elite and crisp and clean and great music and great vibes and all that stuff. Nobody cares because the expectation is it is a sending place. And that is the church. I, I, I don't think the church is as much about who you get, get into this one hour little moment uh, together. Buenos dias, Sam. Como esta, amigo? Mi hermano, Samuel. I love that guy. Um, Sorry, that's my son Meriden vibe. Every, every person who comes in, you just got to greet them on the spot so everybody knows they're here. Um, <laughs> no problem. It's okay. No problem. Um, it's not about just stuffing more people in the seats for an hour. It's about equipping and encouraging missionaries and sending them. And so that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to do it through one of my favorite passages. I remember when we replanted our church Samaritan three years ago, just on the precipice, on the genesis of that replant, going back, Bible open, pen ready, uh, coffee, you know, just hooked up to the IV to my heart to reread Sam uh, Luke 10 to reread the Samaritan. If you're a church person or if you've never been in church, a lot of people have heard this story of the Samaritan. It is our church's namesake. And as I read this story again, uh, it, it, have you had those moments where the spirit of the living God just raises the hair on your arms and speaks to your soul, draws you out and really defines you? That was that moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read through the story uh, and then really just the way that I felt like the Lord kind of whispered to me was to identify the four characters, the four characters of the story that I think really was like four legs of a stool, giving a church a vision to what does it look like to live as sent. Okay. Um, I also asked Chris and the team, do you guys have, we use a whiteboard at our church and we say, if you can't see the whiteboard, that just means it's time to church plant. Um, so I asked him, do you guys have a whiteboard? And he said, yes. And it's the only one bigger than you. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. So I'm the least techie person in history. I hope that that works. Uh, but I'm going to start out, if you can slap up there, Luke 10, there it is. And I'm going to read 25 through 30. Seven. If you have your Bibles, this would be the time to turn there. And this is reading in the NIV. It says, on one occasion, an expert, say expert, in the law stood up to test Jesus. He said, teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? And he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. Interesting. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And when he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. 
But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This is the word of God. Uh, Here's my whiteboard. I'm going to draw on the four corners of this, the four corners, the four characters that we build kind of the four legs of the stool at Samaritan Church and and, and how I want to encourage you this morning. So there's four characters that we're going to discuss this morning. We have the broken man. How am I doing? Is that right behind me? That's what I'm talking about. We have the Samaritan. We have the innkeeper. And we have the expert. One by one, let's pick these apart together, okay? Uh, The broken man. We have this interesting description about this broken man. It says that he is half dead. Half dead. We like to kind of tongue-in-cheek joke together, which half? Which half? Is it the person or is it the system? Because the person is very clearly something's going on. Verse 30 says that he has stripped him, they have beat him, and they left him all alone. He is depleted of resources. He is depleted and hurting physically. But ultimately, like we see so often in this neighborhood, it's not the addiction, it's not what they have, it's not what they don't have. It's about loneliness, right? So many of the things that our community deals with works as just a self-medicating to the, to the deep pain of that he is left all alone. This person is struggling, this broken man. But there's also a system that is going on. This road, this nine-mile route that has a half-mile uh, elevation drop, if you saw it on video, you could Google the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Uh, It is very rocky. It is very thin. There is really hard and painful corners. And there's a nickname. Like in the hood, everybody and everything has a nickname. This road has a nickname. Does anybody know it? It is called the way of blood. You don't just get a nickname like this because somebody is creative. Now, I don't know what the system issues were. Maybe it was not well lit, which I imagine it probably was not well lit. Maybe there was not enough guards traveling this. But from a nickname like that, there is a common enough occurrence that this broken man, I guess I always pictured the, you know, on the side of the road that this is a, a, a shocking matter. This man actually might not have been the only man on the road. There might have been several men on this road. Daily, weekly, men that are, women that are losing their life. This is a dangerous place to travel. Uh, We in our little East Springdale hood, we have a way of blood. We have people that are struggling. We have a system that is struggling. Let me just give you a couple examples. Um, The Springdale person is overlooked and undervalued. You ask somebody to describe the four towns, Fayetteville, Springdale, Rogers, and Bentonville, and just watch their facial expressions when they describe Springdale, and, and you'll know a little bit about what I'm talking about. There is many that are hurting and that are homeless. There are many that are racially profiled. There are many that are rejected. Every day after school, I have 20 Marshallese teenagers that come play basketball in my driveway. Last week, the police were called because of the assumption that it was a gang war going on in my front driveway. I was like, you don't know the names, you don't know the people. You see a couple of really sweet uh, brown-skinned kids that speak another language, and it's automatically a threat. That is a system issue within Springdale. That's just one example. There's also system issues. Let me just give you one out of many. Um, like, Like your church, you see that there is... There's a housing crisis, 
right? There's a housing crisis in Northwest Arkansas. Everyone brags about it on all the marketable opportunities of how it's booming, but there is a housing crisis. Let me give you some statistics. Uh, in Springdale, it is 50% rent, 50% owned. In the rental world, nationally statistics, if 8% of rental units are open, that is a healthy amount of open and available space. All right, so if you're in an apartment complex and there's 100 apartments and there's eight that are available, you're on par. You're doing good. 3% is considered functionally closed nationally. If 3% of the spaces are open, basically nothing is open. Springdale average is 1.7%. So not to mention the fact that out of the four towns, four towns, uh, that if you are Latino or if you are Marshallese or if you are another race, if you are dealing with immigration status or language barriers, uh, we do a lot of work with the halfway house, the Phoenix Center. Uh, if you have anything on your record, that 1.7% plummets into obscurity and hopelessness. Try to train a guy who's been in prison for 10 years coming in, try to restore his life, walk into a rental office with him, and there's 50 other applications prior to him ever putting his down, right? That's a system issue. If the vision is restoration, that is going to break down uh, hope for a person in that position. And so we as a church, as we consider what serving our community looks like, we live in a little three-mile kind of goal, a three-mile vision. We're not trying to be regional. We're trying to aim centrally and locally. I love how Peter prays in 2 Corinthians 13 at the end. He says he prays for restoration. He aims for restoration. Okay? And so we, we as a church, we live with this vision of restoring the heart and soul of our neighborhood, the people and the systems. The fact that this is working right now is a gift from the Lord, or maybe just the quality of excellence that this church is. That's a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, secondly, the Samaritan. This is the unlikely hero, right? There is a point that this is supposed to be a contrast to the expected hero, which would be the priest and the Levite. If you put those in like uh, local government terms, the priest would be like the mayor or the spiritual head, and the Levites are like the, the, the police force executing the 600-plus do's and don'ts of what does it look like to be uh, religiously successful. And it's interesting, it says they are coming down from Jerusalem to Jericho. What, what is in Jerusalem that would interest a priest and a Levite? Starts with a T, rhymes with Rempel. Temple, good, yeah, 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 the temple. So the fact that they're coming down from Jerusalem means these two spiritual elite leaders have just had their summer camp experience. They've had their meeting with the Lord. They've had their city church Sunday morning at 10 a.m. They're walking out full of the Lord, and they see something that's going to be a problem. Now, in their religious upbringing, that could be a ceremonially unclean situation, but the only thing with intent they do is avoid. This is a convenience and calling issue, so they walk to the other side. They're the expected, but it's the unlikely hero that does something about it. In Luke 10, 33, if you can just like, I don't know, if you're looking for an idea for your next tattoo, this would be it. Okay? He does three things, and this is the primary things that we train our people when it comes to uh, serving our community. He sees, he has compassion, and then it says that he moves towards him. We use the word proximity. He moves in proximity towards the broken man. I remember almost 10 years ago, um, I was walking east down Bacchus. You familiar with Bacchus, the road right here? I was walking east towards Bacchus, towards the Samaritan Community Center, um, just coming off a big uh, seminary, you know, thesis thing where I have to, what does it look like to plant a church in your city? And I was just like, well, yeah, plant a church. You know, me, myself, and I, this is big time. And I start to look around and go, do I even know my city? And I remember looking at the apartments going like, wow, what does all those words on the side of the apartments mean? And then I'm like, there's a lot of laundromats on our corner. I don't remember seeing laundromats anywhere. Why is there five within a Frisbee throw? And then I remember looking at this one sweet lady uh, that 
my first thought was that she was Hispanic. And I was like, man, I need to work on my Spanish. And then I look at her, I'm like, it's kind of cold out. Why is she wearing a Hawaiian dress? Why is she wearing flip-flops? I didn't even know what a Marshallese person was, let alone that Springdale is the biggest population of Marshallese uh, outside of the islands in the world. Now I have two Marshallese daughters. Uh, and and, and, and I, I had no idea. And it felt like scales coming off of my eyes. God beginning this journey of seeing the people and the places and the things about the community that God has posted us up like a mailbox in to see and know and love and understand to see. Secondly, to have compassion. There's no greater picture, there's no greater example of genuine and true compassion than in John 1 in the message when it says that Jesus moved into our neighborhood. Jesus sent by God to put on skin and take on our mess. You will never get a point of moving towards your community if you do not have a gospel-shaped, gospel-sized heart for your neighbors. You'll never have that if you don't first see them. But as you see, you move to genuinely and appropriately and rightly love them to have true compassion. And then lastly, to move in proximity. I have a theory as well uh, with this, see, compassion proximity. I think, I think Jesus has actually given you a little bit his playbook because I see again and again in the Gospels, Jesus seeing, loving, and moving towards him, people. One of the best examples, I think, is John chapter 9, the story of the blind man. First verse, John 9, it says, Jesus sees this man on the side of the road, which implies everybody else has missed him. Blind from birth, this man had been nothing but beg for his entire life. But Jesus just doesn't leave it at seeing him. He has compassion on him. Now, Jesus could have healed him any way that he wanted to. He could have does it like the centurion son. I was like, wow, smelly man on the side of the road. I'm just going to say a word and heal you. He could have done it like the, the, the 500 where he, or the 5,000 where he's feeding me. He could send one of his guys to go bring him some food and heal him. But it says that Jesus goes near to him, spits on the ground, makes a mud pile. Do you remember this story? Makes a mud pile. You don't want to know the, the, what the Greek word for that mud pile was and that spit in the mud. You want you to know what it is? Here's your Greek lesson of the morning. Patue, like you can't write this stuff. Patue takes the mud, rubs it on his eyes, but the word says he anoints his eyes. What an act of compassion that he would actually use a spiritual word, a spiritual posture, touch, look, feel, to heal this man that he loves. And then this man really gets into a despairing place. He used to be an outcast because of his eyes and because he was a beggar. But when he goes into the religious elite, it says that they reject his word, they bring in his family. His family rejects the man. They kick him out. So not only now is he physically cast out, now he's like actually lonely, spiritually cast out from everything he knows. And the chapter ends, it says, Jesus goes and finds the man and doesn't just heal his eyes. He says, do you believe he heals his heart? The final one is Proximity. You see, we can like be proud of living in East Springdale. We can talk about statistics of East Springdale. We can even say we love Springdale, right? You can slap that terrible bumper sticker, Springdale, it's not that bad. I hate that bumper sticker, right? You can be proud of it. But until you're willing to change your convenience and move towards people, that's the story of the Samaritan. That's the training of serving your neighborhood. And so our mission, your mission, our mission is not to just fit them all in here. It's to release the church. It's to view yourself as missionaries. John 17, as I was sent, so I send you, says Jesus. Next one is the innkeeper. Say innkeeper. The innkeeper is the unexpected leader, the unspoken one, the one that if you have a quiet time on this, your highlighter often doesn't hit. They are the untold story of Luke 10, which maybe even some creative liberty, right? Why would you start a hotel or an inn on the side of the way of blood? Surely it's not because business is great. So maybe it's because there's actually a heart and a vision Maybe it's as simple as a sweet old couple who loves to cook a good meal. 
a wife who, who hums and loves to sing as she goes about her day, a husband who's kind of handy and can fix it, both who are good with a cool cloth to a hot head, right? Caretakers, people that are committed to margin with people. But the things that I see about it as well is that they have a high degree and supernatural sense of trust. The Samaritan did all the original work. He brought the donkey, brought the money, brought the gear, brought the person, but it's they who saw restoration through to the end. Without knowing, get this, without knowing whether or not the Samaritan was going to come back. Remember that? He gave him a couple of dinar and he said, hey, I'll be back in a hot second. And they, I think, because they value restoration way more than accolades. They value the heart and the soul of a person way much more of if it's tweetable or bloggable or Instagrammable or whatever it is. They just love the, 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 the opportunity to truly love and move towards a person. They're the ones who go the distance, offering uh, th this, this sense of, of, of truly restoring someone. And so as we talk about innkeepers, we, uh, he used a word that we use a lot. We use this word microchurches. All that is is three circles uh, where every worshiping community on mission that we try to gather people around those three things, a worshiping community on mission. And we have microchurches that meet in laundromats, basketball courts, driveways, um, gang centers, um, where else? Murphy Park on Tuesday nights, all over this community, because we're not, again, we're not trying to get people into our community center facility. We're trying to get missionaries out. We're trying to bring the church to where people are. We're not expecting a not yet believer to be the missionary to leave their home and enter our space. We're taking on the convenience call of going, no, I'm going to leave my bubble and I'm going to bring the gospel as light into dark spots. These worshiping communities on mission with margin, with trust, with availability, planting and multiplying microchurches. And then lastly, the expert. This is a story within a story, yes? This is a story of a man. You see his motives that he wants to justify himself. He wants to say, I've done it right, and I just want uh, Jesus to check the box so the world knows. But I think it's fascinating. He asks two questions, and these are worth noting. Question one is a life question. Question two is a neighbor question. You see that? This man is an expert, a religious elite, has the title, the education, the resources, the privilege, and yet he lacks one thing, and he knows it deep in his soul, he has not experienced the life that this Jesus keeps talking about. And there's so many there. There's so many in our neighborhood that, that they have a spiritual background. Uh, there, there's very few uh, people experiencing homelessness that are atheists, I have found. There's a spiritual appreciation, but there is a depth of, have I really tasted life? And you know this as well as I do, that you can have a screensaver on your computer of mountains, and yet it's a little different to walk the Rockies, right? And you can talk about having a relationship with God, and that is a little different than Psalm 69, 36, that those who love his name will live in it. See, this guy even had the right answers. He quotes the Shema from Deuteronomy 6. Love the Lord your God, heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And yet the life is not manifesting the overflowing life of Christ. He is not experiencing. And Jesus unlocks that life question with question two, the neighbor question. Do you see it? He says, he moves from head to heart and heart to hand. As he misses the life, as this justifying excerpt misses the life, the answer to who is my neighbor is anybody who God brings in your path. Anyone hurting, anyone broken, anyone in need. And by living out that seeing compassion proximity, you are actually living and being sent as Jesus was sent. You are becoming little Christs as you walk that journey. And so two words that we kind of celebrate are movement in, and movement out. It, it's quote unquote easy to consider what does it take to get people out of the vulnerable cycles of poverty? 
And I'll quote Henry Nouwen, uh, that the way in is the way out. If you want to serve the hurting people in the hurting, hurting systems of East Springdale, it happens by moving into their spaces and places. It happens by building relationships, which, by the way, for some of us, we're like, I don't even know how to do that. Picture in third grade recess. My daughter will come home and she's like, I have a new best friend. Tell me about her. We were at recess and we were on the swings together. Wow, what's her name? I don't know. But she likes to swing. And she found a common interest. She found a common time. And she consistently meets a person there. And now she's her bestie for the resty. Right? Maybe we could take a lesson from the third grade swings that we would spend time with people, knowing them, loving them, joining them where they are. That we as a people that tend to be experts ourselves, we need to move in a humble way. We need to move from being a rescuer and becoming a receiver. We need to move from just this general charity and move to dignity. We need to move from checking the box of like slop and gravy on Thanksgiving mashed potatoes to remove those lines and those barriers to build genuine relationships with people for the sake of Jesus. That's who the church needs to be. Let me close with one, uh, one story of how the Lord humbled me and, and, and helped me see a little clearer. Um, I am not a runner. I, I am not built like a runner. I don't even look like a runner. But I thought, man, maybe, why, why would I think it's a good idea to run a 5K? But like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run a 5K. That's what people do. So, so to do something like that, you train. Anybody ever, any runners in the room? No. Okay. So you got to train, you got to do it. And so I'm training and just dying through running, trying to figure this out. And anybody here, the hog guy, this massive marathon that I guess is famous now that runs, yeah, it runs right through Springdale. And at the time it ran right through my backyard over by JB Hunt Park, right through my backyard. And I'm sitting there watching all these runners on a day that I'm supposed to be running. And I go like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to jump into their little marathon and do my running today with them. And so I put on all my little running gear, you know, try to look all cutie and stuff like that. And I hop the fence and I just jump in and I felt great about myself because like these people have already run like 21 miles. I'm like passing people. I'm like, so long, sucker. And I'm going and there's Gatorade tables and signs. You can do it. I'm like, I can do it. I'm, I'm one mile in. I can do it. They're giving me Gatorade. I mean, I was, I was receiving all of the blessings. It was wonderful. I did have the integrity to right before crossing the finish line, I peeled off and came home. So just so you know, and if you're part of the runner's fraternity, I know that I broke the sacred code. I, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. Um, but as I was finished with that, I, I had this thought that it takes a lot uh, to pull off a marathon. So you need three things, really. You need runners, and runners are a different breed, Right? Different shoes, different shorts, too short of shorts, weird socks, right? They wear headbands at inopportune times. They're like, it is a different life. They eat different, think different, family different. They do life different. You also need Gatorade hander outers. Those are really important roles. You just need people to serve and bless and bring resources and help and be a part of it to refresh the runners. You also need people that just put on the marathon. Because right now, you and I, I mean, we could go outside. We could try to run 26.2 miles. We'd both die, right? But we could do it. But the fact that somebody slaps one of those cool, like, blow-up bubble things at the end, and there's bands jamming, and there's food served, and there's money given, all of a sudden, it's the hog guy, and it's official. You need it all to do a marathon. The one thing you don't do is what I did. You don't hijack it for your own needs. You don't hop into a process just so you can take a selfie at the end and call yourself a marathoner. And I think to be the kind of church that you're talking about being, it's a lot like running a marathon. You need runners. There's people in this room that you feel called to this. You're part of this church for that. You want to be in the hood. You want to bring good to your hood. You'll look different. You'll eat different. You'll give different. You'll church different. You'll family different. It'll change your life. You'll lose your life so you can gain it. There's people in this room that are Gatorade hander outers. You might not be actually the runners, but you just might be the refreshment team, helping, aiding, partnering, giving, cheering on. There's some people, as Chris said, 
that you're just the marathon sponsors. And your calling to this marathon journey is honestly to fund it. To fund it and make it work, to make it excellent. And we have the privilege as the church, whether you make a ton or a literal, to be generous to this calling of living ascent as a church. The only thing that doesn't belong is the person who shows up for themselves, who shows up, I like to call them selfie servants. They don't do anything 99% of the time, but they want to show up to an event so that they look like they belong, so that they can kind of get the Rothbone approval or the, the God approval or the priest and Levite approval. That's not us. Amen? That's not us. We don't do this for us. We don't do this for our story. We do it for their story. I'm proud of you guys. It's a privilege and joy to partner with you in this. Should I pray or you want to pray? Let's go. I'm going to pray. And I have no idea what's going to happen next. So I'm just going to like mic drop it. Lord Jesus, to God be the glory. Thank you for a story like the Samaritan that teaches me who, who, man, I struggle with life questions. I struggle with neighbor questions. I struggle with getting out of my own rhythms and out of my own bubbles to enter into the world to live as sin. But Jesus, what a joy and a privilege to see how you saw us. You loved us full with compassion. And you moved towards us. And then you say, hey, people, as I am sent, I'm sending you to do the same. So thank you for the kind of churches that don't just like allow that, but invite that. May we be a people not focused on what happens in this room, but what happens out of this room. Send us to the end of the world, end of the earth, and the end of our neighborhoods. To God be the glory. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Matt. It's, a, it's kind of amazing how you see uh, different takes on things. So essentially, we said the same thing last week. I rapped, uh, showed a video of me rapping, talked about being a gangster. But really, we're saying the same thing. It's like, if, this is, if we're going to be in this, if we're really going to serve, you can't fake it. It's got to be who you are. It's got to be part of your life. And so... We don't want to be a church that fakes things, you know? We don't want to be fake and just uh, do enough to take pictures and, and, and make this part something, you know, do it enough so we can put it on our wall and feel good about it. We really have to be a church that's engaged and a part of our community and that's sent. So thank you, Matt, for sharing. And uh, hopefully we get to work together uh, in, in the future, in, in the park, in uh, many different ways as well. But um uh, but what a great and challenging message. Who was challenged this morning? I was challenged. So, yeah, thank you. All right. Well, what we're going to do now is close. And so uh, thank you so much for being here and being part of our service today. Uh, if you would like to, to make uh, a bid on any of the auction items today, go ahead and do that as you leave. Or uh, if not, we'll see you um, maybe tonight at small group or maybe, maybe Wednesday night at, uh, on our family night meeting. Whenever we see you, I hope to see you again soon. So. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for a wonderful, wonderful day. I pray that as we go, Lord, you bless these folks as we go, and may we be activated part of the, the Great Commission and to serve our, and love our neighbor. Amen. Wow, thank you so much for attending Church Online today. We appreciate it so much. If you enjoy the service, make sure you click like, and if you would share our video, we'd be super grateful. Plus, it gets the gospel to more people, which is a goal. If you receive salvation today or, or, or God just really got a hold of you in that message, would you let us know? Contact us. Our, our information is here at the bottom of the screen. Send us a text message and let us know that God moved in your life today. And, hey, if you live in northwest Arkansas, we want you to be a part of the City Church. Plan your visit today. Go to citynwa.com. Plan your visit and be here next week with us in person. Have a good day.